Players, friends, welcome back to the 8-Bit Embassy with me, the 8-Bit Ambassador. My previous video was a review of the Lightning Mods V2 Elite console. I'd only had it a short time when I made that video, but I was already pretty impressed with it, as you might remember. So the good news is now they've issued an update. So if you buy that console from now on, you're going to get these software updates, but they've also updated the hardware to switch controllers. The even better news is they've very generously made this update available to existing customers. And as being one of those, I took advantage of this. So they charge you £20 for the send-in service. You send your hard drive in and they send it back. In my case, it took five work a day. So I posted it on Saturday, received it back the following Saturday. It's pretty uh, pretty good turnaround time, if you ask me. Um, I did pay the full price. They're not expecting a review. Um, so my experience should be representative of yours. So let's go and see if it's actually worth that 20 pounds. So here we are, let's have a look at what's new then. So first off, we've got this slightly new look to the front end. So you've got this black, almost like a Spider-Man carbon fiber kind of look to it. And it's, uh, it's nice and crisp and clean. All the logos down on the left hand side have been updated. So they match that theme. Uh, it's a minor touch, a little uh, cosmetic detail, but it's uh, not lost on me. It's quite nice. Uh, so here's a quick preview of what's <laughs> what's been added. Firstly, Amstrad CPC. Now this was buried before, but uh, it didn't work properly. You could switch on via the menus. Uh, there weren't any games added really, and they didn't work properly. Uh, but now they do. And it's got keyboard support as well. So uh, that is a nice one. A lot of people would have cut their teeth on this system, so it's nice to see that there. Uh, MAME is there, MAME was there before. Amiga, now this was a huge issue for me because as a big Amiga fan, I really missed the keyboard and the mouse support for some games. Um, the, the controller, the keyboard, uh, virtual keyboard and the mouse, and the right, left and right buttons, they were mapped great and they worked really well for a lot of the games. But some games is just no substitute for a keyboard and mouse. And I'm very pleased to say that that support is now there. Uh, C64, okay, so this is a bit of a weird one because, it, again, this is buried in the menus, you can turn it on. They haven't included the games yet, but I'm told, if I add my own ROMs, that will work. So this is what it comes with, you've got the Great Guyana Sisters and Mario C64. Uh, not a huge selection, obviously, but I'm told, I haven't tested it yet, I can add my own ROMs and that'll work. Um, we've got, look at this, Xbox, original Xbox. So this is included. I think they understand that this isn't 100% yet. Um, but my experience with it has actually been really good. Um, one game in particular, I'm going to tell you, Call of Duty 3, plays perfectly until it doesn't. It just pauses. At a random spot, it will just freeze. Um, I don't know why. I haven't noticed it on any of the other games yet. Um, but when it freezes, you can just back out you, like you would quit. It doesn't break the whole system. It just freezes that one game. So, I don't know, but it's a work in progress and hopefully it's a good sign of things to come. Um, Triforce, now this is a real treat to have included because this is Mario Kart GP and Mario Kart Arcade GP 2. So you go to pretty much any arcade around at the moment, you are going to find one of these in there. It's a very popular arcade game and for good reason. Uh, it's a great game to play. It's a very light version of Mario Kart as it's an arcade version. But it's great fun to play, and it's it's a real privilege to have it at home. Uh, yeah, it's a real novelty factor, that one. Um, there's more games in a lot of these systems, um, like the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo GameCube. A lot of games that I saw were missing last time, they've now been included. So like the Mario Party series, for example, um, lots of others. Uh, Game Boy Advance got lots of more games, so does the Nintendo DS, um, and the Philips CDI. Now I think this is just on my system because when I sent my <laughs> when I sent my drive in, I asked if there's any plans to include it, and they said 
give this a go. And they, they, I, they stuck it on for me. Uh, and I've got to say, it's really pretty good. It, everything that works, works perfectly. Now, there are a few games on here that don't work at all. And that's because the CDI had a special video card uh, that isn't supported by the emulator yet. So again, this is a bit of an experiment, but um, something to look forward to hopefully soon with uh, a uh, future update. But most of the games work really well. Now, you probably know it's not the best gaming system out there, um, but as a novelty item, it's great. And there's some really good things to explore, like there's um, Mario games here, and there are uh, Zelda games that are unique on this system and it's a massively expensive system well out of everybody's reach back in the day so to be able to have those these to tinker with there's a lot of stuff to explore in here <laughs> and it's a it's a fantastic thing to have uh, look at this now this is something that I was hoping would been on the first iteration so it's fantastic to see it has been included now this is Sega Model 2 including the infamous Daytona and lots of your other favorites from the so mid 90s, early to mid 90s. Most of these games work absolutely flawlessly. Uh, there's a few minor issues, nothing's broken so far that you can't play it. There's a couple of um, little issues with Daytona. Um, there's some Slight glitching. Um, I've seen cars clip through walls and I've seen uh, a couple of minor hang ups, but it seems to be the more you play it, maybe it's a loading elements when you first start playing it. Um, those um, those little pauses in gameplay, they, they work themselves out, and the more you play it, the better it gets. The On this game and a couple of others, the controls haven't adapted too well to the controls they, they, they come across a little twitchy um, but you just recalibrate your thumb and it's perfectly flayable also you've got no analog control on the accelerator and brake um, but as you can see it's upscaled so it looks really nice but you can see that slight glitch that I'm talking about and you see as I go around the second lap most of this will have resolved itself but I've been practicing on this a little bit. So you can see I've got analog control from a steering. I mean, it's Daytona, you don't really need a lot of analog control for the for the accelerator or brake anyway. But yeah, the car does sort of like flick into a skid a little bit, but that does work itself out a little bit. But I wanted to show you this as the worst example really of all the ones that I've seen. Most of them work perfectly well. And you can see, this is very playable. The arcade version of Daytona isn't the best version that's on the, included in this set anyway. The one on the Dreamcast is the one you want to be playing. But to have the arcade version here, if there's something particularly you want to check out, then it's very nice. But look, you can see, it's perfectly playable. You're probably not going to get your best lap time on this, on this version. But there you go. It's a nice novelty to have. And it's one of my favourite arcade games ever. So to have it in my home is just incredible. Uh, what else is there down here? Well, I don't want to spoil the surprise. Sega Rally. So you've got an excellent version of Sega Rally on the Saturn, uh, but now you've got the, the legit arcade version here as well, and that plays really nice. Uh, Virtua Cop, uh, Virtua Cop 2. I could play, go through this all day. So uh, Model 3 has actually got more games on it as well. These are the systems I'm most excited about. Now, weirdly, the Model 3, even though it's a much more advanced system with better graphics, um, it runs better. <laughs> it runs much better than the Model 2. I don't know why that is. And even the controls translate better. It's like it was made for the controller. Um, so they've added a few more games in here. Emergency Call Ambulance. I really love this game. Uh, I think, yeah, Harley Davidson is new. Um, and they all run just perfectly. Look at this, Sega Rally 2 and Sega Rally 2 DX. Now these, are ju these just run so well. It's amazing. Star Wars Trilogy Arcade, that was on there before, but I think it's worth an honorable mention because it's such a good thing to have included. Uh, and I think 
that's it. There's a few other minor tweaks. More PlayStation games, of course. More PlayStation 2 and some more PSP. Um, so, there we go. That's it. I am really lucky. I've got a lot of neat stuff out here and that's come from a lifetime of collecting this crap. But as soon as I got this unit, it straight away became my weapon of choice. As a workhorse, it's an absolute powerhouse. It hasn't got fancy logos on it. There's no limited edition. It's not a Neo Geo branded special import from Japan. It is a workhorse. It does everything you would want it to do and more, you can switch between everything straight away. So it was already epic before this update, and it's even better now. So if you haven't bought it yet, if you're sat on the fence, there's never been a better time to buy it. If you've already got it, take advantage of that update because you will not regret it. So my ultimate decision is, its update is prior approved. <laughs>